And so what I'm going to do is make a little bit of a green, like a light green. I'm using my French ultramarine blue again. And, uh, and just do the swatch of just this color. I'm using my flat brush. Uh, for what? Yeah, it's fine. So again, I'm just kind of just making this kind of little swatch, little kind of interesting shape here. What I can do is with a thirsty brush, I can um, grab, because we're going to make these tree shapes kind of going across. And before it dries, I'm going to grab a thirsty brush and wipe away these kind of trunks. And that's a nice thing about doing this. You can actually do a negative painting or you can just go ahead and wipe away some of the, before you have to work pretty quickly because it will dry. So I'm gonna put a thicker one here, maybe have a little limb like this. And this is gonna, just gonna be our background. Oh, and be very careful. So this, see, this is my non-artistic brain. See what it did? It mimicked and it reversed the shape, right? Me not even thinking about it. So be very aware that your, your, uh, your mind is always trying to make, to make sense of things, to always put things in a certain order because your mind thinks, our minds think in those ways and not um, in, you know, in random shapes. It's hard for our mind to, um, just not how our mind works. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of lift up some of these shapes here. I'll let that dry a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and lift. One thing about using this technique, it's like digging a hole in the sand at the beach. It kind of fills itself in already, again, over and over again. So you just gotta be very aware and just kind of keep going over it. And this is just a, a dry brush. And I'm just kind of wiping away these shapes to start off with. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that dry. Um, put a little darker tone on a little darker green here and um, that's just going to again I'm going to start putting in layering a little bit of uh, not too dark just just kind of a medium tone a little something to give a little contrast and we have these smaller trees here I'm going to go ahead and put in these kind of darker trees just kind of coming from there and then maybe put little little um, limbs going in different directions, right? And then maybe put another one, maybe this one here, and not, not straight, maybe just a little bit of a, of a bend to it. You want to, you, uh, you want to break up and put a little smaller kind of limb here. And so I'm just kind of building, figuring out what this is going to look like, but again, Notice right now I'm creating that sense of um, depth because I have these lighter ones, the background. And so unlike the ones that I that I did, we did the leaves, this one's going to be, the darker is going to be in front and the lighter is going to be in the back. So um, it works both ways when we are dealing with a sense of contrast. But the key is to you know, don't let your mind's always going to try to make sense of things. So I'm trying to create these interesting shapes, but not the same shape and not trying to let my mind mimic what I see. <clears throat> and we'll do one more, maybe a thinner one, maybe right here with a little thinner one right there. Right there, right? Okay. 
Let that dry a little bit. I'm gonna put another darker tones on top of these to create a little bit more depth. So one, th one thing about laying down these washes in the very beginning, or the smaller washes, they dry a lot quicker versus the larger washes. So I think that's pretty dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and put, this time I'm gonna put a little bit more pigment. He's right there, a little bit darker tone. I'm going to, even though I, not learning my lesson, a little bit of red. That's how you, you just do a little bit of red like that, really dark. But the key is to have less water and more pigment to get a darker tone. Um, so, and you, how you'll tell is the, the it won't, um, the water color, it will, um, it will bubble up and not like, the bubbles are because it's just such a lot of pigment on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put another, maybe darker one here, just kind of covering up some of these other trees that I put in here. Using, I'm gonna make sure I don't cover up all this awesome brush strokes. Kind of covering up. Make this up, make this a little bit thicker. And as they, as they go, if you go darker, make sure this, the trunks are a little bit thicker. Again, because we're creating a sense of depth and try not to mimic whatever you had in the very beginning. So I'm gonna put, an, you know, put another one, put right, another one right here. So covering up that one there, which is fine. Don't get too carried away with like, oh, but I like that tree, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. All right, that was right there. Put another one right here. Very dark. I'm gonna put one more right here. This one's gonna be pretty big, thick trunk. And then there's a little bitty bitty. Let me put a little smaller, darker trunk here. Bitty bitty buddy. Maybe put another thin one right here. Maybe one right here. Look at all that, again, sense of depth I just made, right? By using dark, lighter ones, darker ones. You know, also changing the size of the shape of the trunk of your trees. Let that dry. And um, this is fairly dry now. So now what I can do is I can go, okay, now let's, uh, let's just bring some of these shapes in the background up a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a little bit of this kind of watered down color here and then maybe just kind of put in a lighter tone right behind here to kind of bring in, bring out this tree that what I kind of put in the very beginning. Right, right. And maybe I don't have one here, so I'm gonna go and put one in. Now I'm just kind of putting this little tree that's that lives right here. Hello, little tree. Oh, I miss Mr. B I miss Bob Ross, the man. Another tree here. Another one over here. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, look what we got. We have a little forest. Little forest. Look at that. Oh. You know, and that's the glazing technique pretty much, you know, that's the glazing technique. I'm just layering, 
you can go either light to dark, which we did. We did a lot of the buildings so the lighter were on in the foreground and the darker were in the background. Um, or we can go ahead and do um, this way where our lightest are in the background and our and the darkest are in the foreground. So it just depends on um, your subject matter and how that would look. So, but there's, there's multiple ways you can paint with this because it's really about contrast and not, and, and nothing more than that. I'm going to blow dry this, this other one here and be right back. All right. So I dry, now I dry that initial one with a tape on top. Um, and what I can do is I can maybe add a little more depth to it by maybe grabbing some darker tone here. I can more, more, less water, more pigment. And maybe just put a couple of these little trunks just back here, just to create a little more depth. Maybe have a one kind of coming across, so kind of at an angle a little bit. So it's kind of coming behind that. Cause you don't want, you know, you want to really be where to make it very random, just like nature is. Another one here. All right. And then we're going to go ahead and just take the tape off. Ooh, and look at that. It just, it just creates a nice um, negative shape. Then you can actually fill that in, you know, let's say we just kind of fill that in with a lighter tone uh, or maybe just fill in maybe one of them with a lighter tone, maybe here, maybe a little bit darker. And so again, that's another way you can create, you know, using, using um, tape to mask off a certain area. 